So it's no shocker that I have a thing for translucent shells. I mean, come on, to see the guts of this thing is, is pretty cool. Okay, that, that sounded wrong. To see the guts of the console is what I meant to say. I was soaring through Amazon and I came across translucent shells for the OLED switch, which is the one I have, obviously. I mean, who's still using the first model switch? Just kidding, if you're still using the first model switch, there's nothing wrong with that, I was just being funny. This man. The shell was made by a company called Extreme Rate, which I'm sure you've heard of. They've made different shells for different consoles like PS5 and Xbox and so on. Heck, they even have shells for the Game Boy Color. So I went and I picked up a shell set from Extreme Rate. I got an all clear shell set for my Nintendo Switch OLED. The set came with Joy-Cons and the back of the Nintendo Switch, which I thought was pretty cool and a fair price. But you could also be paying to possibly brick your Switch or your Joy-Cons. So I do not recommend you buying this if you do not have patience or steady hands. I swear, this thing was like performing surgery. I was sweating brick, bro. Even though I've shell swapped PSPs and DS lights, which are pretty hard shell swaps, this one was still pretty freaking scary. So to start the process, I thought I'd start off with the actual Nintendo Switch shell on the back. Because I thought it was going to be the easiest. Boy, was I wrong. The one thing that I thought could possibly happen, actually happened. To start the process of replacing the shell for the Nintendo Switch is you have to unscrew everything basically to release the kickstand from the shell then the shell itself. But you need to be careful because the actual screws that were holding everything together were kind of freaking tiny dude. These things were really tiny. I was, I was very cautious because I did not want to lose any of these screws even though the kit does come with replacement screws. I still didn't trust third party screws even though Nintendo screws are trash. Once you get the kickstand off, all you have to do is unscrew the Joy-Con rails. It's basically the thing that keeps the Joy-Cons to the Switch and connects to your Nintendo Switch. So this is actually where I encountered my problem. So there are three screws on each side of the Nintendo Switch rail. Most of them actually came out with no problems. I didn't have a problem at all except for one. That screw stripped way too easy, and it's never surprised me, Nintendo screws strip like crazy. In my last, I think my last video, the screw for the SP stripped. Yeah, I know the console's older, but still, like, I feel like their bolts they use for their handhelds and their consoles aren't as strong as they need to be. So I thought I was done with this process, like, well, I can't continue this because it's stripped. I looked on Reddit, there were quick fixes, I tried all of them, they didn't work. A sick thought came in my head, it's something that made me sick to my stomach was using my mini drill. And that was my last resort and we did it. I mini drilled on the side of my Nintendo Switch OLED. It was freaking terrifying, but what I had to do was drill, very cautiously drill the screw until the actual bolt itself snapped in half. Once I saw the bolt snap, the rail came off and I stopped using the drill. I Dropped it on the table, I was like, I'm done, I'm not touching it no more. The rail came off, but of course we can no longer use that screw post because it's gone. We turned on my Nintendo Switch also to make sure it turned on, the Joy-Con's red, we are fine. Once we got that out of the way, it was just basically taking apart the Nintendo Switch back. So I thought after this, you just put on the new shell, but I was wrong. In the tutorial, there is another part. If you want to do that, I said no. And it was adding the shell for the USB-C bottom on your Nintendo Switch. You basically have to go into the Nintendo Switch more. You have to actually have to unplug stuff from the motherboard. And I said, nope, I'm done here. With all the stuff that's already happened to me and what I've already done to the Switch, I'm not going to proceed further because this is dangerous and I don't trust myself. Don't recommend doing it because it's just that little part. It's literally just this. Everything else is... Fine. Yeah, I, I guess it would look cool, but I said no. I skipped it and started on with the back of the shell process. Basically taking everything from the old shell to the new shell and then reinstalling the new shell with the new kickstand. Extreme Rate does point out that the kickstand is a little thicker than the original kickstand. I think it is to support the actual switch because this is made out of plastic and not metal like the original. But it's fine, there's nothing too noticeable, but when you touch it, you do feel a little bit of a bump. But it, it feels good, and it looks nice. 
So once we finished the actual switch, the next part was doing the part where I thought was going to be the challenge, which were the Joy-Cons. I was terrified because I knew I could possibly destroy these Joy-Cons. Luckily, I actually owned an extra pair of Joy-Cons, which were the yellow and blue colorway. I didn't really use them, they just sat around, so I didn't have to use my OLED white ones, which I actually love. So that was cool. So the Joy-Con disassembly process wasn't actually all that hard. Shoutouts to the Extreme Rate YouTube channel. Their tutorial on this shell swap was actually straightforward and it helped a lot with this entire video. I'm going to keep on saying as long as you guys have patience, I think you can accomplish this shell swap. You don't have the patience or the steady hands. Maybe it's not for you. So weirdly enough, the left Joy-Con was actually the easiest one out of the two. There were less parts to move around, and once you put that one back together, I had to do the right one. The right one is a little harder. It is because it has more stuff to it. It has the IR sensor, the Bluetooth chip, and the NFC chip, which are three more things added to the board. So you just have to be cautious and not try to strip any of the IR sensor ribbons or destroy the NFC chip and also ruin the Bluetooth chip, which I don't actually know what it's used for. I did it very cautiously. I honestly don't know if the NFC chip works or the IR chip works. I have no clue, but I put it back together, screwed everything back, and the Joy-Cons lit up. They, they had power, connected to my Switch, and they worked. Once I was done, I felt so accomplished. I can finally add the Nintendo Switch shell swap to my resume. Once again, shout out to Extreme for making very high quality shells for your guys' consoles. This video isn't sponsored or they sent this. I actually purchased this with my own money to check it out and it's really cool. But let me know, am I a little too late to customize in my Nintendo Switch with the Switch 2 on the way? And what else should we shell swap next? Comment down below, I'm actually curious. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys hit the like button. I do appreciate it. If you guys like my content, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell. You'll be notified anytime I post a new short or a new video. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Insane. I cannot believe it. We are so close to 1,000. I honestly didn't think this channel would grow as much, but you guys have been very supportive following me on my shorts. I know I don't post a lot of YouTube content, but I'm trying to in the future, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.